But let's uh, look at a very important uh, principle is to test Scripture against Scripture. Scripture has uh, a lot of human authors, but only one ultimate author, the Holy Spirit. So therefore, the Scripture doesn't contradict itself, and um, the, the Scripture rather explains itself. And one good idea is to look at the closest passage to Genesis 1 in terms of the structure of it. In fact, the closest one is actually the passage of Numbers 7. Because both of them have a structured account and they have numbered days. See, what you have here is an account of the 12 tribes of Israel sending a representative to dedicate the tabernacle. Each of the 12 tribes had one guy uh, sending something every day. So on the first day, you've got Nashon, son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe of the coming Messiah, too. The second day, Nethanel, son of Zuar, the leader of Issachar. Third day, Eliab, son of Helon, of the people of Zebulun, brought his offering, and so on and so on. And then what's uh, next uh, is a bit of a gap there. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enan, the leader of the people of Naphtali, brought his offering. See, what you have here, these are numbered consecutive days, just like you have in Genesis 1. And here's the thing, no one looking at this passage would say that these days were millions of years long. So it took 12 million years to dedicate the tabernacle. So why is there a problem with Genesis 1 which has the same sort of structure? The only reason it's not from the text, it's from people bringing outside ideas upon the text. Instead of uh, God uh, speaking to us from the text, we are trying to tell God what he really meant to say.